This is lesson eight of English 30-2 and it's day four. <clears throat> so now you're going to write a literary response to a memoir. <clears throat> so one of the characteristics of a memoir is that it is a therapeutic experience for the person writing it. The writer's contemplation of the events and meaning or significant of those events in retrospect is beneficial to them in some way. Coming to terms with the past, with what has happened and shaped our lives, is in many ways the retelling of a story in a way that makes meaning out of pain. <clears throat> a story that creatively describes a personal struggle and how we faced it can shift our perspective about our strengths and resilience. Telling it to others is a way of giving witness to ourselves and there's always the chance that our story is exactly what someone else needs to hear. The stories we shape tell our sense of self and me the meaning we make out of our circumstances and experiences. And sometimes you might not realize it till after you tell the story and then you're like, oh, that was good for me or I learned something from that. And you may not actually realize it until you go through the process itself. <clears throat> Every time you tell your story and someone else who cares bears witness to it, you turn off the body stress responses, flipping off toxic stress hormones and flipping on relaxing responses that release healing hormones. Not only does this turn on the body's innate self-repair mechanisms, and function as preventative medicine or treatment if you're sick, but it also relaxes your nervous system and helps you heal your mind of depression, anxiety, fear, anger, and feelings of disconnection. Therapy offers you the process, opportunity to process what happened in your life. The way you tell your story, <clears throat> the pace at which you tell it, and the details you include or don't include can all be meaningful when you have a chance to explore them. Going into extreme detail about an incident that happened can help alleviate the anxiety you might be feeling. Telling your story helps you feel less stressed. For someone to walk through that detail with you and empathizing with what happened can help you feel heard, seen, and understood. You can start to distance yourself from what happened through telling your story, becoming less identified with the events and the feelings that surround them and more at peace with yourself. And I just thought it was so interesting how even Patterson telling about Buddha in chapter 24 that I found that therapeutic in a sense. And it allowed me to tell my story or a bit of my story to you. And I was just going to add one thing that I thought about um, after last night, how Buddha's spirit just declined and there was no no keeping him alive and I remember in the hospital I had a nurse on one night and she said I have never seen someone do as well with the type of amputation that you've gone through as you have and I just said well I owe it to my faith and to you know the Lord Jesus Christ helping me to get through this and to to carry on and it was just so sad how how Buddha's belief was that he couldn't enter heaven because he was no longer a whole person and I thought that was just so sad that his belief system limited him to that extent <coughs> <coughs> sorry I guess the other thing it made me think was that how thankful I was for modern medicine and that the infection that I had in my, I guess, uh, amputation or I don't know what you'd call it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. In, I guess, where they close the, the wound up. And I, it's kind of, it might be interesting to you, but <laughs> I mean, basically they left quite a bit of the back portion of my upper thigh and buttock and then they they just bring it around to the front and then stitch it all together <clears throat> and I'm not sure to the infection it may have come 
I, um, so I had a fixator put in the side of my leg, like a metal rod that went into the bone after it had broken. And there was an infection in that. And I wonder if that infection persisted and uh, stayed. Anyway, so thankful that, uh, you know, I didn't get infection and die. Because I know a fellow that just had an amputation not too long ago, um, <clears throat> much lower down. And he did not did not make it through. Yeah, um, you know, and I don't know whether there was something to do with his spirit as well. Anyway, that's a little bit of an aside, but <laughs> there's a little bit of therapy that I experienced just in, in talking about it. It's therapeutic to know that um, your story can be shared and it can uh, encourage someone to say, hey, well, you know, if she went through all that and can carry on and, um, you know, carry on with stage four cancer, which uh, I start treatment for tomorrow. So if you can remember me in prayer, that'd be awesome that this uh, treatment would work. I'm kind of facing um, a pretty big tumor in my right lung at this point in time. And it's actually making it hard for me to breathe. And I think that's why I'm coughing a bit too. So anyway, I am going way off topic here. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> so... Writing the story and Patterson's memories of everything may bring healing or restoration to him. Do you think this is true of this memoir? In what way could it be true? Is there anything in the memoir to suggest that Patterson found the sharing of his experiences to be therapeutic? Um, and one thing I would think about because I know this is a bit of a, a tricky essay to write. Um, but I would definitely use as one of your, your arguments his use of humor. Because I think sometimes when we, we want to talk about something, like sometimes we like to be self-deprecating, right? And not... Um, not be so like, oh, this is exactly the way it was. And look at me, I'm so amazing, right? So I, I would think of that for sure when you're, when you're coming up with ideas about what to write about. So the question is, the big topic of your essay, and don't deviate from that topic. What is your opinion that reliving our memories through writing or discussing them can provide therapeutic action for us? Say what you say with evidence from the memoir. Look at what he says about why he wrote it. Also look at quotations like the one on page 49. <clears throat> so this is similar to the essay that you completed in lesson five. So it's a literary essay. So you're going to have to develop a thesis statement. If you want to email it to me, you're welcome to do that. Um, I've had one student do that already, and that's just fine. Organize your ideas in an outline. Include the outline with your essay. So <clears throat> you need to have an introduction. Then you need to have a three-body paragraph. And you need two or more reasons for your answer. Uh, if you have three, you'll likely get a better mark. So I would suggest you come up with three. And we've already said paragraph format. All right. This was a problem in the last essay. Don't use I in your writing. This is not a personal essay. It's a literary essay. Personal essay, fine to use I. Literary essay, no. Okay. Proofread it. Read it aloud. That's, that's what I've say, said. If you don't have Grammarly and you're not using it, use it. If you don't want to download Grammarly, which I don't know why you wouldn't, then use the word uh, suggestions that are given to you. It's not as extensive as Grammarly, but it may help you some. Make sure you have transitions between the ideas and paragraphs. I noted when I was listening in the last few chapters, a lot of times when he ends the paragraph, with a bit of foreshadowing as to what's going to happen next. And that's a great way to transition into the next paragraph. 
So maybe you want to try that. <clears throat> Title should be interesting and... Um, Attention grabbing, I don't want you to use the title of the memoir itself. And, okay, last time you had to hand in your essay first for formative assessment. Some of you were a little confused about what formative assessment is. So formative assessment is we're just in the formation stage of your learning. And you've written an essay and now I give you comments and say, okay, I fixed this, this is correct. This doesn't fit the format, you need to change this. This is wonderful, you don't need to change anything. Those were some of my comments. And I'm afraid many of you handed in the very same essay. So for me, that means I sort of do the work twice. I give you comments and then I grade it again. All right, so, this time I'm going to say, if you do want formative assessment, you can email me your essay. Just attach it to an email to me and I will look it over and give suggestions. So that is up to you. <clears throat> All right. Same format as the evaluation criteria, criteria for your literary exploration assignment. And I think that was all outlined for you um, in the last um, rubric. So I need to put that rubric into that assignment and I will do that hopefully today or tomorrow morning. So group discussion, quite a bit uh, to answer there and I gave quite a few points for that. So I have change some of the points on the group discussions because most of them were all out of two and I was like okay two marks for all of this that's just not to me fair uh, compared to some of the other group discussions so I did change the marks on some of them so you might find your mark changed your grade changed you can go back and look at it and they should be whatever I've marked should be up to date all right Okay, that's quite a bit for today, so hopefully that's helpful to you. Take care.